All right, top of the agenda is the creeping sense of dread that surrounds the Fremantle Dockers. Their three positive COVIDs have now become six amid fears that by Friday night it might get worse. They might be a decimated lineup that takes the field against North Melbourne. We know you've got Lobb, Acres and Collier out with COVID already. Are there any more to add to that list? No, but we're still waiting on a, um, yeah, a few results, our test results to come back. So, yeah, we expect that list to grow. Is there a chance that you'd have so many cases this week that you might need to call on the waffle list or is it not that bad? Oh, we don't think it's going to get that bad, but you never know with these sorts of things. They're so unpredictable. At this stage, uh, yeah, Griff is going to join the three um, with Freddie and Miki as well. So, yeah, we've got six out, but it's a challenge, um, but it's an exciting one um, and it creates opportunities for other, other players. Trying to make sure we limit the damage and, um, yeah, we, we knock it on the head in a week and we get our players back next week and we've got a um, healthier, healthier squad. After a good win, you tend to get a bit more touchy-feely and closer and sing the song together. And then we sat on a bus for an hour, sat on a plane for four hours, and then sat on another bus back to the club for 40 minutes. Could have happened in that time. Last time we saw him, smiling, he had a massive smile on his face. Looking forward to the next time that they played. Now it's a bit grim, isn't it? So Lob and Meek, both rucks. Akers, the wingman who just best on ground. Yep. Collier and Frederick, two of the... The other wingmen. And ...mid-sized the... forwards yep. as well. And Logue out of the defence. So that's six, and it's still on a path it's towards Wednesday. Friday night. And this is, so we watch Melbourne lose five but mm. their depth is so substantial that they were all established players that were coming back, including premiership players. This is a mighty task for a Fremantle team that has just come through its rebuild period um, and isn't, frankly, as fully stocked as the team who just came through it. Well, we'll certainly find out. They'll have players that they think are ready to play and they can't fit them in because that's what good teams have. So we're going to find out about their depth. So where's Griffin Logan there? Is that him on the right? So Lob, right. Akers and Collier are sort of patience one, two and three, A, but, B and C. But you wouldn't want to be standing next to him with your arm around him, would you? Now, I don't know if you haven't been in many football clubs, Jared. A lot of blokes just jump in the showers together as well. And then, as you know, so, Justin said, onto the bus for the ride to the yeah, airport, yeah. four hours back to the west and then another bus ride. So, well, let's... Be... Are they, 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 they are. They're fearing more. Last Wednesday night, we spoke about Melbourne, and I said my sure thing, there will be more players. Yep. And it was. I think another two went, yep. two or three went down. So it's six on a Wednesday. Now, they're playing Friday night. So I'll ask you this question. How much can the Fremantle Football Club team, team, not club, team, how much can they afford to lose before they lose their ability to, to compete really strongly yeah, so they're against all, North Melbourne? They are beyond tipping point. I think. I think six. If you were going to run a rule of thumb what tipping point is, I reckon six out of your 22 is that. And I think it's compounded because this is not a team that is fully stocked with, with depth. They are coming through the development period. So they're going to be a severely compromised team already that takes the field on Friday night. Now, they're playing a team that is in full-blown rebuild mode, so it's probably just as well. But if they were, if they were facing one of the powerhouse teams... Um, that's compromised beyond all recognition. Yeah, it is. So you've got it your is. system, but once you pull so many parts out in all parts of the field... How strong is the so system, this is though, If you didn't have your rules, and the rules are right, I think, that they are guiding the season well that the games go ahead, this is where you would go, nah, this team's not playing. Six? Six is, six is the tipping point, mm. they're not playing. OK. Uh, we've, we've gone with the rules to play, so and they I think they, you know, they have compromised one game drastically that the Eagles were in and compromised a couple of others, but not quite as alarmingly. This game is compromised. Yeah, but see, I'm not as, I'm not as alarmed by this game as, as you are, and, and that's not a criticism. I was alarmed when the Eagles made 14 changes. Yeah. Right? They've made six. So I was jumping up and down saying, this is not right. 14? That, to me, was wrong. Six? Come on, Fremantle, what do you got? Yeah, yeah. How good is your system against a, a young team, a developing team, as you said. You know, to be honest, we call them young and developing. A really poor performing team called North Melbourne. How good is your system 
against that. And if they imagine if they hold up, what if they win by 35? Yeah. It's like, wow, how, what is this system? So what we'll do then, we'll ask all the analysts who were Joey and Kingy and everyone, can we really, really knuckle down and what are they doing well? Really, really well. I've heard them all talk and that's great, but really, can we go, yeah. as Ross Lyon could say, just can we go a little bit deeper? And find out. The other side to that will be Fremantle has set themselves such a position from which to attack from. Six and one. They've just won the admiration of all for what they did at Geelong. It's They are about to hit a game that is just... The circumstances are now grossly unfair. And if they cough this game up oh, because of it... Yeah, I'd be shocking. Yeah, it would be terrible. Yeah, uh, just shocking. But, you know... That's the world we live in. Fingers we can't crossed do much that about it stops it. at six. No, that's yeah. right. And this is the yeah. course that everybody has been committed to. But it wasn't fair on West Coast. And this is a tipping point for You've the been players. reading the papers and listening to the radio news? Yep. We have got variants coming into yes, Australia. Yeah, yeah. So everyone on the East Coast, all these clubs, don't worry about the clubs, just people, it's coming here. and We're getting more, mate. So it's been West Coast, it's been Fremantle. They might look back and they might look back on this season in 14 weeks' time and say, thank God it happened at round seven. Yeah, that, that's... Because it might that. happen in the, on the East Coast at round 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, which would really... Anyway, it's only, that's only crystal ball. Yes, <laughs> that's very gloomy, Robbo. But I mean, it's going to be it's gloomy. gloomy. Go for a ride out, go for a drive outside there, mate. That's gloomy. The world's changing, mate. It's, winter's <laughs> coming. Winter. Well, there's a TV show about winter, isn't yeah. there? Game Games of Thrones. Thrones. Yeah. Winter's coming. You've got to be a bit deeper. Winter is coming. No, I've never watched the show. <laughs>